No. I'm not gonna. Oh. Okay. All right. It's a bit short. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's look at some of the things that I think we do kind of okay, and that could perhaps inspire your smaller groups to do things in a different way, more effective way. Right? That's kind of the, the goal of this session here. So just to give you a bit of overview, of course, everybody starts with that, right? We have this executive board. Maybe I'll just close the door here because it's a bit loud. Come in, come in, come in. We have this executive board, which is kind of different from what most organizations in our movement do, right? Usually there's a board that oversees things in a bit of a general sense, and then there's the executive that does things, right? In our case, it's different because the laws of the country are a bit different, right? But it's also different for a bit of a practical reason, right? <laughs> well, let me tell you in a second. The other committee we have is this audit committee that we have to have by law as well. So this audit committee is the body that should check every year or so if the executive committee is doing its job, right? But in practice, well, all of these two bodies are basically the whole membership we have, <laughs> right? So, right, there's like two people extra <laughs> that don't have any kind of function, right? So we could say that, okay, come to our group, you get a function. You get a post, you get, get to feel important. No, I'm just kidding. But that's what we have to do, right? Okay, members currently seven, okay? Out of those seven, we don't even have people that come regularly, and I'll talk about that in a moment. We still manage to do stuff, right? So that's kind of the mission, uh, the, the message of this, or uh, the mission of this talk, right? Just an example, we collapse love Earth. Great stuff. See, spring, the article writing um, initiative. Now we're um, launching another project called Seniors Writing Wikipedia that many other chapters maybe have already done. Right? It's, it's a second iter iteration of it. And I'll talk more about how these three can be done in kind of a light way. Okay? And there is a soon to be reveal that I can't really talk about yet. <laughs> But we have big plans, so follow our social media later. Okay, um, so what helps to make things kind of better? How do we work even with those you know, seven people, but practically four, five, maybe six? Right? We have bi weekly meetings. And when I say meetings, I mean online meetings. Right? <laughs> It's not possible to meet in person. Why? Any guesses? <laughs> you know it, yeah? Location. Does anybody have the same issue? Pretty much everyone, right? The location of the people is just not the same, right? So you got to do online. Do you feel that two weeks is a good kind of pacing? Not too often? but also often enough, yeah? I mean, I don't know, maybe your experience is different, but we over time found that the two week period is the best, right? You don't want to be too often, but also not, right? Yeah, okay. One other thing that we should do, and we do, is this strength and weaknesses kind of thing, right? When you have a very limited number of volunteers, right, it's actually quite easy to know them. Right? That's the advantage of having a smaller group, right? Agreed? Yeah, okay. Some others, good. <laughs> right? So when you know the strengths and weaknesses, you can kind of push people into areas that align with those strengths and weaknesses. Well, actually, I, sh I shouldn't even say push, right? You should inspire people <laughs> to go into those strengths and weaknesses, right? Oh, sorry, just the strengths actually, right? Note the weaknesses. Don't push people into weaknesses, right? Does anybody do that? Maybe, no, okay, right? So there was a time when we had this strategic meeting and I want to 
even talk more about that a bit later. But a big part of that meeting was to just do that, right? Look at what the strengths and weaknesses of our little team are, right? So we've got this big kind of A3 or even A2 sheets where we wrote everybody's strengths and weaknesses and interests actually as well, right? You could maybe add that as the third thing, right? The strengths, weaknesses, and the interests of the people, right? But capacities, right? <laughs> so the thing is that we often have this image like, okay, I'm going to volunteer, great. But then life happens, right? I mean, we also saw that with the previous right, presentation. Life just happens and you can't really control it often, right? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, but suddenly, right, oh, I don't have capacity, right? So even when we make the annual plan, right, we kind of have to think about, well, are we going to have the capacity, right? Well, let's see how that works out. So next thing, yes, the strategic meeting that I wanted to mention, right? This was one of the things that we haven't had in a while, or actually we didn't even have at all, right? So after Corona left us, or mostly left us, we were lucky to organize this, and also thank you, Foundation, for uh, giving us a bit of money to organize this. The idea, again, was to find out what the personal goals, interests are, right? Where do people want to go? What would they like to do? What are their strengths and weaknesses, right? And out of that, we tried to organize an overview of what the group can do with that, right? What are the group's possibilities out of the, all these strengths and weaknesses and interests, right? But again, we had to talk about well, what are the actual capacities, right? What can we put together, right, out of this mosaic, right? And the other thing, we talked about how to do things, right? Like we have the ingredients, right? So now let's talk about the recipe, right? How do you make it happen? That was another thing we did. And then the last thing was actually doing it, right? I don't know if you find it so, but somehow the in-person is better for working. It gets stuff done faster. Do you agree with that? Do you, is that your, yeah, some others here too, right? So that's what we found as well. Like when you're there in one kind of, uh, one kind of room, right, and you're together, you inspire, there's some kind of spark, right? And you're like, oh yeah, let's do it. You know, you don't just say, oh, okay, okay, I'll, I'll do it at some point, right? No, you just do it until you are just sad and tired. And... No. So that was one thing. And so we keep finding out that it is better in person. <laughs> it's better to meet and do things together. But then, well, we don't really have all that many opportunities to meet up, right? In person. So that's why the online meetings we come back to that, are actually also quite helpful, right? When we are there live, not like looking at each other, not you know sharing the same bread or whatnot, but we are there together at the same time, and we can still inspire each other to do things. It's a lot easier to get inspired like that than to you know email each other, be like, okay, I'll, I'll do it later, right? So that's that. The good news is that there is funding, right? If you want to host a meetup like that, I believe you can find funding. Yeah. Cool. Any questions so far or anything? All good? Speaking too fast? No. Should I speed up? No. Okay. So let's look at the next thing. Um, one of the things that maybe I've already talked about, right, is that people kind of like to choose their roles, right? And um, it doesn't exactly have to be a formal role, right? I talked about how we have this, you know, structure, formal, because it's the law and we have to have it and so on, right? But people still kind of have this tendency to choose a role, informal role, right? Like, yeah, sure, I'm the chairperson or, you know, like I'm the vice chair. You know, what does that really mean, right? People are more likely, oh, I'm the communicator or, you know, I'm kind of the ambassador or, you know, I'm more the social media person, right? And when we talk about those, um, um, the interests, right? This is where kind of the, the chairperson, not, not me, right? Um, this is kind of where I come in. <laughs> and 
I look back at those sheets sometimes, right, that we wrote out during the uh, in-person meeting, right? And I'd be like, oh, yeah, you said you're good at that. And I see that this project kind of needs it, right? So I, this is where I try to inspire somebody to kind of go back to the, the role or to, to, to what they like. And it's often successful, let's say. But sometimes everybody's kind of like, well, okay. I don't want to do much. So this is kind of where we have this informal system where I kind of you know, assign the roles. <laughs> All right, sometimes. I mean, of course, people have to agree. Yeah? There's that consent, right? But it is a thing that I kind of have to do in, in, some, in some cases. Right? And then when we talked about this with my group, right, yesterday actually, just to kind of get them to agree with what I was saying. <laughs> I was kind of, not struck exactly, I was kind of surprised by this accountability thing. Because I kind of thought it was, it was given in a sense, right? That when people sign up to do something, um, they do it, right? But yeah, there, there, there actually is a bit of this, like, okay, we need to push people a little bit to actually do what they agreed to do, right? I don't actually have a good recipe for that right now, but I do find myself sometimes in that role that I like have to do a little bit of like, okay, you agree to do this and you know, should actually do it <laughs> because our project depends on it. But of course, if not, well, we shuffle things around. And that's kind of this acceptance of ad hoc <laughs> that we came to accept, right? When we have the annual plan, and that we agree to do every year and so on. We have all of these nice things that we want to do, right? It looks nice. We have you know, all these competitions, editathons, and so on. But what are the actual capacities, right? So we have to accept that the plan that we made, well, is not actually the plan sometimes, right? Or is the plan, but is not the reality. Mm. Um, so often we also do this light versions of things. What do I exactly mean by that? Any thoughts? Like we, do, we turn more light bulbs on? Not, not exactly that, no. It's more like we do things kind of in an easier way, or we don't do everything that maybe should happen, but we still kind of do it. Right? One of the things that I talked about is the sea is spring. Right? It's kind of this regular thing, we've had it for well, eight years or so, right? Where the CE communities, Central Eastern Europe, are supposed to write about each other, right? And what we could do is we could do a massive kind of campaign around it, right? Like a lot of social media and so on and so on. Yes, at some point we just find that we don't really have the strength to do that. Right? Or this year we might not, next year we might have, right? So we just don't do all that stuff. We just set up the landing page, announce it maybe, but we don't like push it, for example, right? Or if you have a competition that, <coughs> sorry, that collects pictures, right? Sometimes you have a jury, right? And you make it really into a competition, like you have jury members that look at pictures, give them you know, marks and so on, and somebody wins, right? Maybe you can make that into a lighter version, right? Yeah. One other thing we really need to do when we're a small group like that is like really learn from the mistakes we make before. Right? And I will mention one project that we did that kind of well was a good idea but didn't quite work out. Right? So we'll, should be the next slide. But we can also think about how we can actually scale operations a bit. Right? If you mobilize those seven people, right, maybe you could do something better than having, or not, not better, but bigger than having four people, right? It's still possible and with some support. So let's look at one thing. And, well, okay, that's, let's actually go to this and then come back, <laughs> okay? So a tale of two senior projects, right? It's a short tale, short story, right? How we were once kind of approached by a library in central Slovakia, right? Well, approached. We had some contact with them before. We were 
thinking of doing a project, it didn't work out. So after a while, they were like, okay, so how about we do this instead, right? And we're like, oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Let's do some seniors writing kind of project, right? So get seniors in, teach them about how Wikipedia works, how to edit, and so on. Sounds good, right? So it was a project that was, like, we thought had a lot of you know, potential, right? We advertised and so on and so on, but uh, it didn't work out so well. And while, when we were thinking about why, what was the problem? One of the problems was that this library was situated in a city where we had one person, one Wikimedian, right? <laughs> Mm, one person is not enough to do a project like that. Right? It's not enough to have one person in the classroom or in the, in the workshop room to, to do this teaching. Right? The learning that should happen needs probably three people. Right? We planned for two, so we had to travel one person, oh, travel, one person had to travel into the city, which took quite a bit of time. Right? And as we were volunteers, well, right? it doesn't quite make sense for one volunteer to travel for five hours somewhere, teach for an hour and a half, two, and then travel five hours back, right? So, okay, we're like, okay, so we'll have accommodation, right? So we ended up spending like 80% of the budget on the accommodation of these volunteers that came to this library that wanted to do this thing, right? So the geography of our membership was kind of the, the issue or the, the, yeah, the challenge. So when I look at things, we started doing this, not a partner-based thing, but a volunteer-based thing, right? So instead of receiving offers, so to speak, from other, from, from partners saying, we want to do stuff with you, we try to focus on the volunteers and what they can do <laughs> And then try to reach out to the partners that we can we can uh, partner with, right? So that's what I'm talking about with the partner versus volunteer choice here, right? And when we want to do this kind of seniors writing Wikipedia project this year, that's what we did. First, we sat down and we talked about what are the availabilities, the capacities of the people, who is interested, who is actually into this project, right? Like we have people are, oh, no, no. some are like, yes, of course, we need to do this, right? So immediately I feel like it's a lot better. The, the atmosphere is better. The project is working better. The, um, the like, kind of like the enthusiasm is better, right? When we go back here, right? I just wanted to say that it's great to reach out to your local hub, right? In our case, it's the CE hub. And they really were helpful, right? Not even just financially, right? A bit of finance here, a bit of finance there, with these little projects. But also in terms of the advice, right? So if you're a small group, try to do that, right? I don't know where you are from exactly, right? But there might be a hub that is close to you that you can get in touch with and you can communicate with, right? There's also the foundation that can send money to you, and you can have grants, of course, you know that. I know the situation lately has been a bit questionable maybe, right? But they are still there. But still, I find that it is good, and it's good to try to have your own source of money. That is not those two, right? Why do I say that? In our case, we have this government scheme where people can send 2% of their income tax to, to us, right, or to a chosen um, NGO, right? Why is that good? I think it's good to have a little bit of money just to do things that need, like, instant, instant doing, right? If there's a meeting, for example, that you need to go and you need to pay for the travel, right? It's good to do it, like, immediately, right? When we have this, you know, rapid grant from the foundation, it's not exactly that rapid, right? So it's good to have this rapid source that you can have. You don't have to email anybody for permission. You just have it, right? So that would be my little bit of advice here. That's 
mostly it from me. Is there anything you would like to ask about or comment about or extend the conversation anyway? Feel free to. We have three minutes as far as I can see there. Three or four minutes, that's fine. All right, just raise your hand if anyone has questions. Or any tips that maybe your group uh, has for the rest of us. Feeling inspired already? Maybe. <laughs> okay, well, in any case, if you wish to stay in touch, my details are here. Take a picture or something. And, or we can talk at lunch or whenever time uh, you grab me at the conference. Okay, cool. That should be it then. All right, thank you.